welcome to the 2021 Black History Month presentation. I am excited, I am honored and privileged to be here to be able to, to deliver this video here to you today. I would like to acknowledge ODRC and the leadership for making this video possible and, and making sure that it is accessible to you all who are incarcerated, to my good brothers and sisters who are incarcerated so you can be inspired and motivated. I would like to also acknowledge New Covenant Believers Church under the leadership of Bishop Howard Tillman for man, making the space available and also this equipment so we can deliver a quality video for you all to be inspired and motivated. So with that being said, I would like to get into this year's 2021 Black History Month presentation. My name is Carlos Christian. I am the president and founder of the Starts Within organization. I am also the published author of three books, Prison Without Bars, It Starts Within, The Walking Logo, Taking Back My Life, Volume Two, and also The Greatest Responsibility, Becoming the Parent Your Child Deserves. I am also a proud father and, and life is good, but also on top of all of that, right? I have been home for 13 and a half years. That means that I have overcame the prison system and, and overcame recidivism by not getting reincarcerated. That means that I served 10 years in prison from 19 years old to 29 years old. And I have been home to be able to see life on a whole nother level. And, I, and that's why I'm always excited to be able to shed that light inside of the prison so people can see that it is possible. And that's what it's all about. When we look at history, we look at history for a particular reason. So we can be inspired and motivated and also to understand that it is possible and we can get it done too. If we have seen other people be able to overcome challenging times and challenging situations, then that is an indicator that we can overcome challenging times and challenging situations as well. And that's what we should do with our history. We should use our history and not abuse our history, right? We should use it. We should say, man, you know what? I'm going to take from that history and and I'm going to add it to my today so I can make my tomorrow great. And I'm so intentional and focused on that. But in order to do that, what I've understood is that you got to have a serious mind. If you don't have a serious mind, then guess what? It's not going to get done. You got to be intentional and deliberate about what you are doing in life in order to be able to overcome these challenging times that we are facing. 2020 has been difficult for a lot of families, a lot of people. It's been a lot of losses in 2020. But guess what? It's something that is there that we can overcome as long as we have the mind to do it. That is the greatest gift that we have been given is the mind. God has given us a mind to be able to overcome all things if we utilize it in the right way. And that's what it's about, right? But you got to be serious. If you're not serious, you can can it. You can't be playing around. If you are playing around, then people will get hurt. You will get hurt. What have your, your mothers or, or, your, or your fathers told you when you were young and you was playing around in the house? You better quit all that playing, boy, before somebody gets hurt. Absolutely right. And that's why I'm just so focused on having that serious mind. When you look at those historical figures from way back in the days or people who have made a significant impact in history, one thing that we know is that they were serious. They were not planned. They were serious about whatever it was that they were standing for. Whether it was injustice, whether it was to be the best basketball player, whether it was to be the best football player, whether it was to be the best artist, whatever it was, they were serious. They had a serious mind and that's how they were able to get it done and that's why everybody looks at them right now in, in, in today's time, right? 
So when we looking at some of the historical figures, I look at the Nelson Mandela's of the world back in South Africa in 1994, becoming the first black president in South Africa, deconstructing the apartheid system. How powerful was that? Apartheid means aparthood, and it meant apartness. So what it was saying is that the people who were non-white in South Africa, for over 50 years, it was laws that was put in place that discriminated against against everybody who was non-white. That means that if you was non-white and you was in a certain house and you was living there for a couple of decades and it was considered a white zone, it turned into a white zone, guess what happened? They said that you gotta get up out of here because now it's a white zone. That means that your rights were not there for you because of the color of your skin back in South Africa. But Nelson Mandela, he said, nope, I'm not about to stand for the injustices. I'm not about to go for it no more. He had a serious mind and he said, man, I'm about to go ahead and get busy. And the brother did what was necessary and he brought his life to the table. That brother spoke to the judge when he was doing five years already in, pre in prison he was doing five years in prison already, and he had got brought up on some additional charges for sabotage. And, and he said he looked at the judge, which was punishable by death. He looked at the judge, and he says, man, hey, I fought against white domination, and I fought against black domination. That brother told the judge this, and then he said that, man, you know what? Hey, man, it is something that I believe in, I'm willing to die for, period. He told the judge that. He was serious about what he believed in and what he stood on. And because he was serious, right, the brother got life in prison. <laughs> He got life in prison. But he said, man, I don't care because I'm serious about what I stand on. Well, guess what? He ended up getting released after 27 years in prison. He has spent 18 of those years in Robben Island, one of the hardest prisons in South Africa. But he was able to still get through it. He lost family members. He lost his children, right, all throughout the time that he was incarcerated. But he said that I'm so serious, I'm willing to separate from anything on this earth to get done what I I believe needs to be done and that means that I'm standing against injustice that is powerful that's a serious mind and that's the type of mind that we got to take on in order to be able to overcome the challenges that we face 2020 was a difficult year for everybody but guess what if you got the mind you'll be able to overcome that difficult year you'll be able to overcome the challenges and the adversity that faces us in the world today so then that's what it's all about is establishing that mind that we need to have to be able to overcome that See, I did 10 years in prison, right? And I was able to overcome 10 years in prison. Why? Because I established the mind to overcome 10 years in prison. I, over, I overcame the, the, the mind that got me incarcerated. Meaning they say, man, you know what? I started selling drugs at 13 years old. I got hit at 19 years old because I had adopted a philosophy that was not going to get me my best life. It got me 10 years in prison. So what was the trick? The trick was what? Was saying, man, you know what? I got a shift in the way that I'm thinking because if I produce a mind that thinks on another level, then I will be able to live on another level. I will be able to see a heaven on earth that I desire and that is all that we are ever going for. We just want some peace. How are we going to achieve peace? The way that we achieve peace in our life is if we have a serious mind to go after it. But if you have a playful mind, guess what? Peace will continue to elude you. And that's what it's all about. If you want to be somebody that's going to make a significant impact in your family life, if you want to be somebody that's going to make a significant impact in your children's lives, then guess what you got to do? You got to have a serious mind to be focused on it and get it done. But if you have a playful mind, that will elude you. You will not be significant in their lives.
That's what it's about. That's what history has taught me. And that's what I'm getting from history right now. And, and, and that's why I'm just so focused on what I'm doing. I'm crossing my T's. I'm dotting my I's to get it done because it is too serious. Life is serious. And I ain't got no time to be playing around. You are serious to me. I ain't got no time to be playing around. So I said that I got to do whatever I got to do to get this message to you through video. However, I got to get it to you. Because you, you are serious to me. I'm serious about you. That's what it's about, right? So what does that serious mind look like? And how do we develop that serious mind? We got to look at what it is. So I want to go back and I want to just look at a scripture that, 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 that pokes out to me. And, and that scripture is, as a child, I, I spake as a child. I thought as a child. I understood as a child but as a man when I became a man I put away childish things right it didn't say that childish things just went away it said that I had to put those childish things away because if I don't put those childish things away then what will happen is that they will surface in my adulthood and if I am running around as an adult and I got childish behavior then guess what is going to happen I'm going to be stripped from, from the quality of my life because I am operating in a behavior that is fit for a child so I I gotta put away my childish behaviors and this is the challenge that we face as adults is that we are walking around as adults and we are behaving like children your childish behavior will not just go away it is work that has to be done to intentionally and deliberately put away your childish behavior if you don't put away your childish behavior it will continue to surface in your life and it will take the quality of your life with it. Your childish behavior is fit when? When you are a child. That's when it is acceptable. But it is no longer acceptable when you become an adult. That's why I say, man, children are a blessing from God. Why is that? Because when I look at my children, I say, you know what? Hold up. You got that behavior I cannot have the same behavior that you got. If, if that is your behavior that you are running around here with as a child, that is an indicator that it is behavior that I shouldn't be running around with. That's why children, they give the community and, and society so much. They are a blessing because not only do we help them develop, but they also help us develop. They help me become a better man. When I'm parenting my children, they are helping me to become the man that I should be so I can live a life that is designed for me to live. So I look at my children as what? I look at them as a necessity for my evolution. Wow, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. I put them away. That's what we're going to focus on today. And the title of this presentation for 2021 Black History Month presentation is what? No kidding around. It ain't no kidding around. Why? Because this is some serious business right now. 2020 has taught you, man, there's some serious business going on right now. And we got to be serious. That's what it's about, right? So let's look at some of the childish behaviors that can creep up into our adulthood and let's work on getting rid of them, right? We got to get rid of them. Just because they are there does not mean that we cannot get rid of them. So I want you to be encouraged to understand that, man, you know what? I identified those childish behaviors. Now I'm going to do what is necessary to remove them from my life because it will take from the quality of my life. I cannot go into 2021 with this childish behavior any longer. It it stops right now. I understand that one word can change the direction of a person's life. And let this word be the word that can change the direction of your life. Childish behavior number one. 
Childish behavior, number one, is that a lot of times is just having the propensity to focus on what other people have and what other people are doing. This is a childish behavior that will put you in a bad place. I'm going to give you an example. My daughter, she goes to the store and she says, you know what, I want those right there. I want those Skittles right there. And then my son, he says, man, you know what, I want the Jolly Ranches, right? And then when we go back to the house and we get ready for movie night, got the popcorn pop, ready to rock and roll, right? My daughter looks at my son and she forgets about what she got at the store, but now she wants the Jolly Ranchers. Wow, she's no longer focused on what she got. She's focused on what her brother has, right? And this puts her in, in, in a bad place because she gets to crying. Man, I want, I want them Jolly Ranchers. I say, daughter, but you got your, your dang old, you, you got your candy that you got that you chose. But now when we get to the house, now you want what your brother has. What I've realized with my daughter, and she's five years old, right? So it's acceptable. And I explain to her as we continue to move along and she increases in age. But I say, you know, daughter, Man, you got to focus on what you got, right? You know, enjoy your candy. You can't be looking at other people candy because other people candy is for other people. They got to enjoy their candy. What's for them is for them. How many adults out here right now is looking at what other people have or what other people are doing? I can't look at what other people have and what other people are doing because it's not none of my business. What is my business is to look at what I got because that is what I've been given. The skills that I have that I've been blessed with and that's what puts me in a desirable place. When I'm talking about a desirable place, I'm talking about a desirable place mentally saying that, man, you know what? I am somebody. But when you start to look at what other people got and you start to you you start to look at what other people are doing what happens with you is that you start to get depressed or you start to form some bit of jealousy or you start to or, or you start to have some bit of hate because you are looking outside of yourself at other people i can't look at your garden i gotta continue to do what i need to do in my own garden Right? Me looking at your garden, what's going to happen? I'm going to get weeds all in my garden and, and the weeds is going to choke out my vegetables while I've been sitting here studying and focused on your garden. You are doing what you need to do in your garden. And I'm sitting up here focused on your garden. And now I don't have the ability to be able to experience a good garden. Why? Because I wasn't focused on my garden. One of the childish behaviors that we go in to adulthood with is man focusing on what other people have. I want that relationship that that person have. I, I, I want that car that that person has. I, I wanna be in that position that that person is in. I wanna get that time that that person has gotten, right? That's something that I used to hear when I was in prison. People used to say, man, hey man, how come I couldn't have got three years? How come I couldn't have got two years? We had the same case and what that did to that person is it made them angry at the person who had the two years but guess what you got your time because that's the time that fit you the time that they got is the time that fit them you trying to make sense of it and the best sense that can be made of it is what's for them is what's for them what's for you is for is what's for you you got to focus on what you got because I focused on my 10 years that I had I was able to take advantage of that 10 years I didn't say, man, I wish I had what they had. I said that I'm going to make do of this 10 years that I got. And I'm going to be appreciative that I do got an outdate. I don't have life. I'm going home. So what am I going to do? I'm going to get into college, graduate with a 3.83 GPA. I'm going to get into administrative office technology, learn the computers, Excel, PowerPoint, and access. I'm going to develop myself in a way to where I will never get incarcerated ever again. I focused on what I had and what I had was the 10 years also what I had was a mind so I said that I'm going to develop my mind in a way to where I can be that father that I need to be I can make the impact in people's lives that I know that I got it in me to make 
I was serious about my time. I was serious about focusing on what it is that I was working with because I couldn't worry about the things that I didn't have because I don't have them. If I focus on the things that I don't have, then I will lose the very things that I do have. So if I think that it was bad now, guess what? It's going to be worse. If I'm complaining about what I do got, then guess what? What am I going to say when I lose the little bit that I do have? I'd rather appreciate and be grateful for what it is that I do got so I can continue to build on it more and, and continue to generate more so I can impact people more. That's my mindset. So childish behavior, number one, is what? Focus on what you have, not what other people have. Childish people, childish children, that's what they do. They focus on what everybody else has, and it makes their life miserable at that time. When you got those emotions and feelings of jealousy and hate, right? When you have those feelings going on inside of you, you are creating yourself a hell. It burns your flesh. <laughs> you are creating your hell on earth. And you are doing that willingly because your mind has made the decision to focus on what everybody else has. And you continue to see your stuff depleting. Because you're not paying it proper attention. So we don't want to be that individual that focuses on everybody else. We want to focus on ourselves. This is what it's about. We got to make the decision. It's up to us. Another childish behavior that my children possess and they show me. See, it's just beautiful to be able to interact with my children. I'm, I'm, I'm a single father. I'm going to let y'all know this is what it is. I'm a single father. I have my son five days of the week. I have my daughter every other week. We alternate. Me and the mother, we alternate, right? And this is what it's about for me, right? So I'm able to see them grow, literally, right? So it's just a beautiful thing because they continue to show me the things and the behaviors that I shouldn't be running around here with. And if I am running around here with them, I say, hold up, wait a minute. Ha <laughs> ha, we gotta go ahead and put that to the side, right? I can't continue to move forward with that. So I gotta put it to the side, right? Childish behavior number two, the lack of awareness of consequences. My children, for some reason, they don't have no awareness of consequences. Now as they get older, my son, he is more, you know, starting to understand the consequences a bit better, right? But my daughter, my son is 12 years old, but my daughter, she's five, she sometimes she doesn't really understand the consequences. For instance, right, she says that, man, you know what, hey, man, let's go ahead and eat all of these grapes. One thing that me and my daughter, we do every night before we go to sleep, right, we have our snack. And one of our snacks is what? Grapes. So we eat the grapes, right? And, and and she just says, man, you know what? They so good. I want to blow through the whole bag. Now, if you know grapes, man, grapes, they be costing when you starting to get them by the pounds. And I said, hold up. We ain't about to blow through the whole bag, daughter, because we still got the whole week. You know, I got a week on, right? Week off, week on, week off, right? So I say, man, you know what? We can't go through the whole bag, daughter, because if we go through the whole bag, then guess what? We ain't going to have no grapes. So if we go through the whole bag on a Monday, then guess what? Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's going to be no grapes. So she says, man, I don't care. I want them right now. I want to eat all of them right now. And, 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 and one of the times I said, man, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and give you that. And then I'm going to show you the consequences from that. So it's like, man, go ahead and eat them all. So then when Wednesday come, right? There's no grapes. And she says, where's the grapes, Dad? We need to do the grapes. I say, man, this is the consequence for going through the grapes like that. You wanted to eat them all. So, hey, guess what? There are no more. And she thought in her mind, you should be able to go to the store and get some more. They still sell them at the store, Dad. I say, man, listen, man, just because I can go to the store and get them don't mean that my budget is set up that way to go ahead and purchase them again and again. It's no bottomless pit here, right? So then when she understood that, she was like, man, this stuff sucks, right? That's a prime example of not understanding 
consequences, whether it be positive or negative consequences, right? You got to understand consequences. This, as, as I start to become older in life, I start to get more of a handle on what? Consequences. And what does those look like? And, and I set myself up to get, to receive positive consequences. Consequences that I would be okay with, right? But as children, they just go. They just do. They just say, man, I feel like it. I'm going to do it. I don't care. Until they face that consequence. And then they say, hold up. Time out. I do care. Wow. That's what we got to peel back right now in that childish behavior number two, right? Understanding consequences. Sometimes people think, as adults, man, they think that life is just going to come to them and it's going to be what they desire it to be without putting in the work. But the more that you neglect, then the more you will be able, the, the more that you will see the consequences from that neglect. And the consequences of neglect, it starts as an infection and it turns into a disease when you continue to neglect over the time. See, that's what is so, that's what's so important is just understanding, man, what do you got to do in life? Sometimes people think that, man, it's just going to be put together for them. People think that when you get released from prison, guess what? It's going to be all the doors is going to open. You're going to get all different types of jobs and things like that because you just did your time. I hate to be the one to tell you, but this is what really goes on. If you didn't put in the work to develop and design yourself in the way that you should have developed and designed yourself, then you will not get the opportunity that you desire when you get released from prison because you didn't put in the work. You cannot kick up your feet and expect your life to look like you desire it to look. It will be a struggle. So people all the time, they say, man, you know what? Man, I got through 2020, man, 2021 is going to be next level. Why? Why? Understand consequences. What did you do in 2020 to make 2021 the next level? It's not just going to be next level because you want it to be, just because you need it to be. It's going to be next level because you have done the work and you are taking advantage of the opportunity that is before you. One thing that I understand that just because it's night doesn't mean that the day isn't coming. The day is coming, but you got to take the advantage. You got to take the advantage. You got to take advantage of the opportunity of day in order to be able to experience the joys of day. You got to do that. You got to position your mind. You got to condition your mind to take advantage of the day or else you will continue to be in night. So that's what I believe, is that we get the opportunities to be able to see a different life, right? God gives us the opportunity to be able to see that. But it is on us to take advantage of the opportunity. That means that if 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 night is is if I just got through with night and then the day comes but my eyes are still closed, do I get to experience the day? No, I don't get to experience the sunshine. Why? Because my eyes are closed. I got to make the decision to open my eyes in order to be able to enjoy the day. I cannot expect to enjoy the day when my eyes are closed. I have made the decision to keep my eyes closed. Yeah, is the opportunity of the day there? Yes, but I got to open my eyes in order to capitalize on the opportunity of the day. If I'm looking out the window and the sun is shining down onto the earth and what I continue to look at is the speck on the window, guess what? I have made a decision to focus on the speck on the window and not enjoy the sunshine. It is a consequence when you don't go after the opportunities that are out there. Your life will resemble that because you will have all of these missed opportunities, right? And when you have those missed opportunities, you will look a certain type of way. Mm. Mean mugging. Because you upset. But guess what? You've made the decision for your life to be what it is. 
you made the decision. Everything that you need, you got. Everything that you got, you need. You cannot waste none of the stuff that you got. I don't care where you at, you got everything that you need. This is the understanding that we got to have and we cannot squander the things that we have and expect to continue to live a life that is, that is joyous. You're not going to live the life that's joyous because you have squandered the things that you have. Don't squander your time. Don't squander your resources. If you've been given all of this seed, you can't just go out there and just say, I'm just going to throw the seed anywhere. You got to make sure that you're throwing the seed on the right ground. You got to make sure that the soil is right for that seed that you are throwing. See, the work is looking at the soil, making sure that the soil is fit for that seed. That's where the work is at. But you can't say that I just threw the seed and guess what? I should, I should enjoy life the way that I should because I threw the seed. It's more to it than that. But when you take your time and you say, you know what, huh, look at this soil, it's nice, it's ready for my seed. Now you throw the seed. You focus on that. Focus on the work that you're putting in, right? Focus on that. Understand that it is a consequence, a negative consequence when you don't, and it is a positive consequence when you do. Your saying should be, I should, I could, I will. I should be a good father. I could be a good father. I will be a good father. I should be an asset to the community. I could be an asset to the community. I will be an asset to the community. I should, man, get out of prison and never recidivate ever again. I could get out of prison and never recidivate again. I will get out of prison and never recidivate again. That's what you should be saying. And this is the exciting thing about it all. is because it's all up to us to make the decision. All right, go. Cool. Man, we getting it done, man. I'm, I'm excited. We are really peeling back some things. I'm starting to sweat. I'm under the lights. But that's just what it is. That's what I do. We doing this thing in one take, and we going to get it done. Because that's what it's about. It's all in me. And I hope that y'all are being inspired by this message right now. Because that's all it's about for me. One word can change the direction of a person's life. That means that your destination might not change overnight and with that one word. But guess what? Your direction will. You might not reach your destination with that one, with that one word. But your direction will change to the fact that you can reach it. And that's what it's all about. That's what we getting done, okay? So now let's look at, at, at the next, at the last and, and, and the, the, the last childhood behavior that we got to get rid of in 2021. It can't go with us into this next year. We got to get rid of it, so we're going to do the work to get rid of it, right? Childhood behavior number three is what? Children have no accountability. They don't, uh, they, they don't want to be accountable to pretty much of nothing, right? This is children. This is my children. I, I, I tell my son, I say, man, you know what? Hey, you the 12-year-old. I need you to go in there while I'm doing a Zoom meeting, and I need you to go in and, 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 and watch your sister. Just go in and play with her for a little minute while I do the Zoom meeting, right? And just keep her out the mix for me, please. And he says, I got you, Dad, no doubt. And when he comes out, and, and, and she comes out the room and she says, man, dad, man, man, you know, and I'm all in the Zoom meeting. I'm trying to do my job. I say, son, man, we all together. This is a team, man. I say, what's going on? She, he said, he said, man, man, she, man, she, man, she just want to play with the basketball hoop right now because I got him a basketball hoop in his room over the door. It ain't the hanger like y'all thinking like we used to do with the hanger and the sock rolled up. It's not that, right? It's an official basketball hoop that you can go ahead and dunk on and everything that you can hang over the door. Got it for him for Christmas, so he be, he, he be, he be playing with that a lot. So his sister likes to play with it as well. My son comes out telling me, and she's all, man, all riled up and, ah, I 
can't play. He won't let me play. And I said, son, what's going on, man? I, I thought I asked you to take care of your sister, you know, while I'm doing the Zoom meeting. And he comes back to me and he says, man, dad, man, she just, man, out of control, you know. And he was coming with all of the reasons, right? Man, she just out of control, man. She won't be patient. I say, man, she won't be patient. What do you mean? He said, man, you know, I got this game that I got to finish, man. It's going to take about like 10, 15 minutes for me to finish it. And she can be patient and just sit and sit on the sidelines while we in the room. And I say, son, <laughs> you think a five-year-old is going to be patient? A five-year-old patient to play while she just watches you play and she wants to play too? And, and, and what he was saying, man, but dad, man, I'm telling you, man, I would have had her. I would have kept her in the room if she would have just, I say, man, listen, reasons and results. And reasons don't matter. Only thing that matters is results, accountability. That means to say, man, you know what, dad, man, I ain't get the job done. Just being honest and say, man, you know what, I didn't get the job done. Accountability is the best thing that you can do as an adult. You got to be accountable. You got to claim everything that you have in your life right now. You got to say, man, I, I, I'm the one that created this hell right now. I, I've done that. I, I've created this hell. I got to admit it. I got to admit it. The way that I go about things, the way that I try to misuse and abuse people, guess what? I've created a certain level of hell for myself. The way that I don't be impeccable with my word, I'm lying and all of that, I've created a certain level of hell for myself. You, you got to claim that. You got to be accountable. You got to say, man, you know what? I'm being late too much to work, and that's why I got fired. Not sitting up there saying, man, I got fired because they don't like me and because of what they do. It's saying, man, what did I do to create this result? Accountability. If you're going to have a serious mind, you got to be accountable. That means that if somebody don't get a proper understanding from what I just said, then I go back to what I did and how did I deliver the message? Did I labor the words in the correct way to present a, a perfect message, to get an understanding? And if I didn't, then I go back and I try to evaluate how did I do that message? If it's a conflict between me and somebody, I say, man, hold up. Let me think about what did I do to prevent a proper understanding. And when I go back and I say, hold up, I made an assumption. I didn't really say everything that I needed to say for you to have the proper understanding. I just assumed that you knew. I just assumed that you were going to do. And because I assumed that you knew or assumed that you were going to do, guess what? It caused a, a disconnection, a misunderstanding. And I got to take that on. I got to say, man, you know what? That's on me. I can't be mad at you because I didn't do the work that was necessary to be able to get the understanding that was needed between you and I. Accountability. I didn't say, man, you know what, man, hey, man, my dude who was stealing from me, that's the reason why I got incarcerated. Or, man, the system, the way that it's set up, man, they, they charging you more to, to, uh, to get caught with, with, with hard than, than, than they are with soft as far as the cocaine is concerned. I didn't say all of that. I said that, you know what, at the end of the day, I developed a philosophy that got me incarcerated. So now I got to do what I need to do to change my situation. If I got me incarcerated, then surely I can develop a mind with the opportunities that are out there, the information that is out there, surely I can develop a mind that's going to prevent me from getting incarcerated ever again. That accountability, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why I can say that I'm here 13 and a half years outside of prison. I came home, I've been able to see my son raised. I got custody of my son when he was 10 years old. He graduated from high school, he went to college. I was able to see that. I got my son, my 12 year old right now, five days of the week, he go to his mother on the weekends. This is beautiful stuff. I got my daughter, week on, week off. We alternate between parenting, right? This is beautiful things. Because I'm holding myself accountable. And I have a serious mind, a serious mind. 
I've been doing the I've, I've been doing rent for over four years, right? <laughs> After divorce, the, the divorce came and I, I wasn't able to be able to keep the house. My ex-wife kept the house. Guess what? I went into a condo. I rented the condo for four years. In 2020, I was able to close on my house in April, in the middle of the pandemic. Serious mind. If you got a serious mind, you will be able to see results. But if you got a playful mind, you will get hurt. And not only will you get hurt, but other people who are connected to you will get hurt as well. You won't be a blessing to people. You'll be a curse to people because you're all about play. As an adult, it is crazy for a person who is, who is in the 12th grade to go and try to sit down in a first grade at, at a first grade seat. That's why the chairs are so small. You can't go and sit at those first grade desks. You can't fit. It's a decision. You have a serious mind, you can overcome all things. And that's what it's about. And the, tr and the thing about this whole thing is, that, is guess what? You can make the decision to get your mind in a serious way to develop your mind in a serious way. You can make the decision. It's up to you. Nobody can stop you from doing it. You just gotta say, I want my mind to be serious and I'm going to do what's necessary because I'm an adult and I need to have a serious mind as an adult. It's not saying that you, don't, you, you can't crack jokes. It's not saying you can't laugh. I laugh, I kick it, I crack jokes, I go to comedy shows, I do all of that. But even when I'm doing that, I'm serious. I'm serious about my laughter. I need to get some real live laughter in my life. So I'll be serious about that. I'm serious about my laughter. <laughs> When I'm, when, I'm, when I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese with my children, I'm serious about waxing my children on the basketball hoop. I'm off the backboard, boom, 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 boom. Other people looking at me like, this brother's serious. I can't help it. Even when I'm playing, I'm serious. I can't help it. <laughs> it's a serious mind. It's a serious mind. So I want you all out there to be encouraged, to understand that, that, that when you are serious and you put away those childish behaviors, you'll be able to experience life on a whole nother level. But you gotta do the work. And when you do the work, you will see the results. You can't say that I want you to do all that you can do for my life to be what it needs to be. You got to do all that you can do for your life to be what it needs to be. You got to become all that you were designed to be. And when you become all that you were designed to be, then humanity will benefit from your decision as a whole. And when humanity benefits from your decision, from you becoming all you need to be, then guess what will happen? You will benefit from your your decision from becoming all you need to be but you got to make the decision your mother will not make the decision for you your father will not make the decision for you your brother your wife nobody will make the decision for you your children will not make the decision for you it is up to you to make the decision you got to position your mind to get it done I'm not telling you what you can't be. I'm telling you what you can be. I'm telling you who you are. And who you are is somebody that's great. And prison and incarceration is below you. You got to become free while you are incarcerated. So you'll never be incarcerated ever again. But you got to make the decision. As long as you put yourself on the clearance rack, you will continue to be on sale. You are too valuable to be on sale. Because if you are on sale, you will teach your children how to grow up and become adults who are also on sale. The decision is yours. Woo! I feel like Ric Flair up in this puppy because this is what it's about. I'm fired up. I'm fired up. And I want this to go out to y'all and fire y'all up to as well and let y'all know, man, listen, we can overcome this thing. And the way that we are gonna overcome this thing is by having a serious mind, putting away childish behavior. 
When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Put them away. And that's what it's about. So I just want to let y'all know, it's, it's the Walking Logo documentary. It should be in all of the prisons right now. You know, just collaborated with, with ODRC to get the Walking Logo documentary, the two hour long documentary in all of the prisons. That's a beautiful thing. Also be on the lookout for the interactive audio books. So I know that y'all probably didn't have my books. I know my books is all throughout the prison system, all throughout the county jails, right? And, and, and people come up to me all the time and they say, Carlos, Lowe's, man, listen, man, that book was next level, man. It really did some things for me, right? And I'll be like, that's powerful. It's been brothers and came up to me, said, man, you know what? I carried that book home with me in the dang on net bag, in that commissary bag, I had that book with me. I ain't leaving. I had to. I had to take it with me. There's people who left the county jails. They took the books with them. Prison without bars. It starts within the walking logo. Taking back my life, volume two, and also the greatest responsibility: becoming the parent your child deserves. But guess what's happening now, right? Because it's just more ideas that get downloaded into me and I'm excited to introduce the interactive audio books right and what that means is that I'm going to be on video just like this <laughs> and I'm going to read the books but I'm gonna be in different type of environments and things like that I'm gonna be at my house I'm gonna be on the deck at my house and things like that and I'm going to read the book and then after that I'm going to read part of the book and I'm going to put a, put a marker in it and I'm going to talk about what it is that I read, right? That's the interactive audio book. It's going to be a program that's going to be introduced to the prisons inside of the state. It's powerful, right? We need to get the mind. It's almost like this, and this is how I'm going to explain it. It's almost as if you got your favorite artist and you listening to their songs and you like, man, yeah, I like that, I like that. But then they do an interview and then they tell you exactly what they was trying to translate in those lyrics, right? Now once you hear that interview, although you understood the song before, now that song becomes even more clearer. That's the purpose of the interactive audio book, right? It's for you to have more clarity of the things that were in those books. And remember, those books are the blueprint to overcome prison, to overcome incarceration. It's the blueprint. That's what it's about. We rocking and rolling. 2021 Black History Month presentation via video. That's what it's about. Turn the penitentiary on his head, stand the community on his feet. Before change can be seen externally, change must be done internally. That is my time. I appreciate y'all. Peace.